Isn't becoming more efficient going to be a lot better way to go with regard to these data centers, uh, whether it's the wiring, whether it's the way that the data chips are. I mean, I know Wang uh, Jensen has talked an awful lot about them uh, already mm -hmm. being a lot more efficient, the Blackwell being more efficient than the previous one. Um, so yeah. efficient, it would seem like we would really want to get these things efficient. Right. So you will do both. Okay. You will make them more efficient and you'll make more of them. Just like um, the current chips are way more efficient than the old vacuum tubes, mm -hmm. right? You'll be doing that in place, but your demand is so oh. infinite that I, even though I make them, I, I hard code everything. There's no, the, the chip itself thinks like a, a large language model. It's got transformers inside. There's companies working on that right now where it'd be 200 times more efficient. Right, and the uh, B two hundred will be five times more efficient than the H one hundred. So everywhere they're getting more efficiency, still no. not enough. So I get that. I go to a hundred times. I still want to go from a hundred thousand to a trillion things. I still want to have a, a a ten million times more. Right. Okay. So if we're gonna do this in space, uh, have you have you plotted? Has anybody plotted? Um, uh, some kind of an idea of how many um, uh, satellites it's going to take to get this done? Um, if you were to do, say, um, a megawatt per satellite, and if I wanted to do a terawatt, um, which is like a thousand nuclear power plants, um, I think uh, about the power of China or something like that, then um, you would be looking at, um, you know, a million satellites a million, satellite. a million one meg one megawatt satellites you need to have that right and and how big um, are those how big are those satellites megawatt uh, um i think you'd be um looking at um a megawatt would probably be quarter of a football field quarter of a football field and that's, and that's unfurled so unfurled how, unfurled when it go but it, when it's in this in the starship but it'd, it'd be, be all it'd be stacked up. It would be like you know IKEA furniture. It'd be ten times smaller. It'd be okay. coming out. So you anything could, in, in yeah. You could get a bunch of them on a starship. Yeah, about a hundred, two hundred. Oh, yeah. oh, about a hundred or two hundred on a starship. So, but yeah. you still be talking about a lot of launches to get to a million of these babies out in space. Right. So it's a good thing that the starship is fully reusable. Right. So now, would you put these? You said you could put them anywhere, right? So you could really put them in deep space. So that yes. no, no longer really an issue for the uh, for the folks with their telescopes, right? Yeah, you can put them uh, out in deep space, and then you, you need to have the the issue is that if it's further away in deep space, it's the issue of how do you transmit the power back if you were to transmit the power. But that's why those ones are just like spreading out over there, you know, like trailing behind us in the orbit, is that if you have the compute there. Yes. So I don't. I'm not saying back the power. I'm just like com computing in place, yes. right? I'm getting power and computing, and then I'm sending the answers back communication-wise, right. Right? right? That's the same thing for Mars, is that I build this massive data center on Mars, cover the whole planet with data centers, where it's like factory, 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 doubling, doubling, doubling until I fill up the whole planet. Then um, it's making the chips there. I bring the chips there. I compute, train my model for a year, and I send the answer back. I'm not saying power back. I'm just saying back the answer back. I'm making the model better. Um, and I'll have other compute locally to generate the answers, right? Um, oh, but some places I can say, okay, if I don't need the answer right away, I can send it over, you know, in a you know 30 minute call mm. over to, to Mars and say, give me a really tough problem. Think about it for a while. Okay, you know, crunch, 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 crunch. And I give it back to you, you know, a few days. You know, here, here's the, the answer. So, yeah, using the whole system to compute, the whole soul system to compute. Right. If you happen to be a big fan of the Cybertruck, you might also be interested in this super fun Cybertruck refrigerator magnet and bottle opener. It is made out of super thick stainless steel, just like the Cybertruck, and it has this giant magnet on the back, so it's going to hold a lot of stuff on your refrigerator. It's an amazing gift, and it comes in that great gift box that you saw before uh, that uses a magnet opener, just almost like an Apple box, you know, like when you get Apple products. 
You can buy it on Amazon for $29.95, or you can buy it direct from me by sending $25 to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters. Please indicate whether you want the stainless steel look, or maybe you'd like to have this <laughs> very clever camo version. And then if you're not in the US, please add $20 for freight. If you'd like more than one, please check the information below to get pricing, as well as all that information I just told you will be repeated in the information below. So once again, think about joining the channel, getting the up-to-date Tesla news every single day. I think you'll be glad you did.